I'm from uh, in uh, Colmeny, or just a village near Colmeny, um, in eastern Sri Lanka. I came when I was four years old, so in fact I have very little memories of my childhood there. But you know, you speak to family members who are there and they give you these stories of as you were growing up. That's all I have. I used to have, ask for two teas or something. I would only drink one of them, but if I didn't get two cups in front of me, then I'd sit there crying and making a big deal out of it. And then as I grew older, you hear more um, sensitive stuff about the issues growing up in Sri Lanka for those back at home. There's not one word that describes what it means to me. Um, you know, it's, got, it's been a way of me learning about my culture and my roots. Um, playing a musical instrument. Some of my best friends that I still know today, I, I met when I was 11, 12 years old, and we've grown up through the you know the school years together, university careers together, and all that around Mridangam. One of the stories that came up was that one of my uncles uh, was shot um, by the Sri Lankan army for a mistaken identity. Someone said that he was a rebel fighter. Um, not sure which group he was identified with, but, you know, he wasn't. He was shot, and obviously my gran lost her youngest brother. He was still very young when he died, and you hear about this great individual. You feel the pain that they feel um, as well, even though you've never met the person. I knew where my principles were, where my uh, feelings stood, and as long as I kept that as the centre of my work, but not let it affect what I did. Um, then I knew that this thing can only result in good, especially with the aim of the project to establish healthcare links in Sri Lanka and here. There's this immediate knee-jerk reaction to believe that this is a government-sponsored thing, so it's a part of their portraying Sri Lanka in a different light and not portraying what the truth on the ground may be. It's, it's, a diff it's thinking outside the box, you know, it's art, creative, aspects of getting children more involved mm -hmm. and they don't because it was medical you know there's very little resistance when it comes to working with a medical background in terms of offering your services to help yeah. others and because before I had applied I researched about the charity spoke to others who had gone before and got an idea of what it would consist of so I knew what to expect before I had gone out there you know for children at such a young age to focus on the commonality yeah. as well as get, you know, really good intervention. I went with three other um, me medics from different backgrounds and different um, stages in the medical career as well. We all got on very well. There were common grounds such as, you know, we were all out there to help the people in Sri Lanka from a medical point of view. Basic things like they go to the paddy fields yeah. and get the clay to make kind of... Um, we did have different different perspectives, but it was all respected, and no one laid judgment on had someone a very else. Kind of sustainable mm. yeah. viewpoint. We were going to hide away from the issues of the conflict, and it was discussed in an open manner. Um, you know, you learnt different perspectives. Even myself, I went in with this view that actually, how much does a singleist individual living in the UK appreciate the effects uh, or the impact of the war? and a Tamil individual living in the North or East. But then in fact you do get that insight that a lot of people do read around the topic and aren't necessarily influenced by what they hear from their families or others. Everyone's like, you know. But it was refreshing to hear it. I do have friends that have strongly held beliefs about, you know, the ethnic conflict their background and what it means to them as well. But they don't impose that on me. Um, but I feel that I can express myself without feeling that I have to change my views or my principles. Being from the Sri Lankan Society in Kings as a background, up until 2008, 
there wasn't any need to express your individual identity per se. Everyone knew who you were. Everyone knew that there was a Sri Lankan society, but it was predominantly Tamils anyway. In 2009, I saw, you know, whether it was videos or articles or talking to others, what was going on in the latter part of the war. Um, and the crux of the matter was that there were civilians dying in the north and east. Tamil community members found it hard to say that they were Sri Lankan when there was this war going on. There was a divide where a Tamil society or the expression of being Tamil um, was being brought up through the university populations. But they felt that there needed to be another society there for an avenue for other people to express themselves. I 100% understood the need for an identity as a Tamil in that situation. Um, but I also felt that the Sri Lankan society was a good example where it had come forward as a unified group. I mean, it, had, it, it wasn't even just Sri Lankans that were in part of the society. We had non-Sri Lankans, Afro-Caribbeans, um, Caucasian members of the society as well because they believe in its ethics behind it, <laughs> just the social aspects of it as well. I didn't think just by starting a society that it would, would have a massive impact. If, if anything, it was more divisive. Um, than constructive. I felt there were other ways that people could help.